Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in. Um, I had some questions a while ago about my Spider-Man costume and how I made some of my uh, iframes from, I think it was around 2011 or 2012. And um, so the, the thing was at the time, um, people that were making Spider-Man costumes, they only had access to kind of a certain handful of, of people that were making iframes at the time. Obviously there's a lot more of them now. And even myself, I've, I've upgraded to a set of um, uh, T-Jack, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2 frames. Um, but uh, at the time, for, for one of my previous um, Spider-Man costumes, uh, the, uh, I had worked with um, Spidey for Fun on a, on a custom print that I wanted, which was sort of a um, modified version of uh, the Raimi um, design. Uh, but I wanted very, very specific iframes. I've just been a huge Spider-Man fan forever, and, uh, and I felt like the movie didn't really capture, um, at least the Raimi movies, didn't really capture the, the iframes that I kind of wanted to see. So... What I did was I sketched up my own um, iframe design, and this is sort of a horrible little template that I still have, just paper, but um, what I wanted to capture was something that was a little bit more, um, had some more kind of thick to thin lines um, that you didn't see on the uh, Raimi uh, design, and um, you know a little bit more of a pointy end. I, I didn't like the sharp corner here, so I modified that, and I kind of you know, added this little kind of nub, a little extra detail there. Um, and then in terms of the frames themselves, a lot of people are just making them out of like flat urethane or cutting them out of rubber or even cutting them out of like foam sheets. But I very specifically wanted to have this channel uh, on the inside of the frame. And the reason why I wanted to do that was I wanted to insert my um, mesh, my eye mesh. I'll talk about that in just a little bit. So um, a lot of people were asking how I got my frames um, to be... Uh, you know, I made them flat, and then how did I make them curved? And this is just kind of a cool technique that you can use for other things. I mean, if you did some cool gilded pattern and you wanted to use it for like a forearm bracer or something, you can actually sculpt something flat, make a mold, and then as it's curing, curve it around that object, and then you'll end up with a curved piece as, as the plastic or the resin cures. So what I did was I sculpted my frames. I actually just scratch built them. So they were made out of a few layers of styrene, I think two layers of one eighth inch, um, sheet styrene and then one sixteenth inch that was put on top and I really wanted these very very specific um, bevels on there I'm not sure if you can pick that up on the camera but um, again I was just really picky about the design so once I had my flat frames made I glued them together I primered them sanded them down and then prepped them for making a mold so the next step was to make the mold itself I just built up a box and then uh, made a sort of a two-part mold for uh, the frames and the whole idea here was that I would pour the resin into this one and then to make sure that everything was flat and consistent I'd put this on top and and extra resin would ooze out but that's okay you might end up with a couple of little bubbles on the inside but it's not a big deal you can either fill them or um, it's not a big deal because it's on the inside of the costume or inside of the mask so um, after I did that I, I cast up a few flat versions and I'm like great that's awesome that's cool that totally works Here's some samples just with some uh, flashing still on them. And for the uh, the resin, or sorry, for the uh, mold material, I, sorry, I can't remember what mold this was. It's uh, green silicone from uh, Smooth On. But for the frames, I was using um, uh, Onyx, which is like a black resin. And then I was also using uh, one of their flexible, um, firmer flexible urethanes um, and then adding a so strong black tint so that, you know, for some people that they actually still wanted the urethane frames, they could have that, and if some people wanted these curved frames, they could have them. So, yeah, back to the kind of the main question, how did I make these sort of really nice compound curved um, frames? So the trick was I would pour the resin into the mold, and then I would cap it off with this guy, and then I'd wait about mm, th four minutes, five minutes, and then as, you know, the 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 resin was curing I'd pop it out of the mold and I, you could open it and you can kind of test it and poke it just to see sort of how rigid it was but um, I kind of got used to to seeing what was the right time I'd pop them out and then what I was actually doing was um, putting them on top of my face shell and um, I would use some uh, el fabric elastic and some tape and I would just basically curve the frame exactly where I wanted it to be so I would trace some lines on the face shell and then you know, put the frame on and then curve it. And then as the resin cured, it would actually retain that shape. 
um, and that's actually still the case today. So this is this was sort of like one test frame. I didn't like it so much because it's a couple bubbles in it, right? But um, you know, it just fits perfectly on there. And these could be attached with um, you know three small rare earth magnets, or you could glue them on top of your your uh, costume. So um, these turned out really really well. Well, another question I got was, well, how did you get them so white? Because that's kind of a, a trick. Um, you know, nowadays you, there's sort of all these sort of different materials. And, um, but, uh, you know, and some of the more recent makers like T-Jack, they've used um, kind of the Amazing Spider-Man 2 pattern, which is this um, uh, almost like a vinyl, cut vinyl with a bunch of little holes punched in it. And then they use the clear lens on top. And that's a really, really cool effect. Um, I wanted a sort of convention friendly costume, so I wanted to keep it mesh. And the first time I tried just, you know, I, I got some of this mesh uh, off eBay, it's just some fine mesh, fine steel mesh. And uh, I, I, you know, cleaned it off with uh, some, some lacquer thinner, let it dry, um, and then uh, primered it and then um, painted it white. And it was all done with an airbrush to make sure it was really fine so that it wouldn't clog. You can see some of these scrap pieces. I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up, but some of these areas are actually clogged and some, some are clear. So I tried to do it to a few sheets to make sure I got some, some good um, workable pieces. Um, but yeah, when I painted them white and I just left the, the other side plain and I put them on, you just get tons of glare because the light comes in and then it basically kind of bounces back into your face shell and it just blinds you. So um, a trick that I discovered was to airbrush the inside black. Um, and you wouldn't think that that would make a huge difference, but it makes a ton of difference. So, you know, again, the camera might not be picking this up, but this is a fairly white lens. And if I put that up here, um, you know, you can kind of make out the image there. It's obviously pretty frosty, but if you use the black side, it's quite a bit clearer. And so that's kind of the trick with having the black on the inside. There's just not a lot of extra light kind of bouncing around and, and you know, causing a lot of glare. So that's what I did with these finished frames was um, I just airbrushed them on the inside uh, black and then these could be either glued on to the spandex or they could be attached with magnets. So um, I'm just going to slip on the uh, hood portion of the costume. And this, um, again, this was a Spidey for Fun print um, and uh, he just does some fantastic work. The, the colors are really nice, saturated. Um, and uh, for my first costume, the um, lenses were actually, or the frames were actually just glued right to the spandex. On this most recent version, um, I keep it separate and um, I'm using the um, T-Jack uh, frames. And so they just clip on with magnets. And I could do the same with mine too, you know, leaving it this way and just having the eye holes cut out. I just did a bit of extra stitching so that it doesn't tear out or come apart. Um, but you can see, Let's turn this so you don't see the other eye. You know, it, it works out pretty good. So anyways, I hope that helps uh, people that are interested in kind of making these themselves. It's not too, too hard. Tons of tutorials on Smooth On and that sort of thing. So um, anyways, thanks for tuning in and keep on watching. Thanks very much.